or more are gathered in his name. He is there. Whoa, for all who go, who run to him in faith. He is there. There is power in the name of Jesus.
God. Amen? Amen. I just needed my tambourine on that song right there, and it would have been complete. I tell you what. Smile at somebody as you're seated this morning. Welcome to Callaway Assembly of God. It's great to have your face in this place. God is good. Amen? Amen. And all the time, God is good. He is good. So as you catch your breath this morning after uh, worship, we want you, if you're a guest with us here today, we'd love for you to grab one of those Connect cards that's there in the chair in front of you and just fill that out if you don't mind. And uh, after service, we have a connection room that's kind of out in the foyer. If you would, wouldn't mind stopping by and dropping this off to us, I'd love a chance to meet you. Got a little gift we'd love to place in your hand and just answer any questions you have and just uh, get to know you a little bit. Amen. Uh, it's a good place to be on a Sunday, amen? It's a good place to be any day of the week is in the house of God. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just need to be in the house. You know what I'm saying? I just need to be in the house. And so uh, we have a lot of things going on, a lot of things coming up. We always want you to go to our website, CallawayAG.org, so you can go to events and see all of the things that are happening and taking place. Uh, or if you've got our Church Center app, you've downloaded that from your App Store or Play Store, you can uh, go to events on there and see all the things that are happening and taking place. A couple of things I want to mention to you, it's kind of coming up on the radar. We have a night of worship and prayer that's coming up. So if you want details on that, when that's going to be happening, go check that out and you'll know those details. We also have a water baptism that's coming up. So we want you to be connected with that. I love what God is doing through water baptisms. I mean, it's just amazing to see what God is doing. So if uh, you might say, well, Pastor Tim, I've been baptized before and I'm good, but I left God and I've come back, but I've been baptized at some point in my life. You know what? I don't see anywhere in scripture that says you can only get baptized one time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we need to at least once, but I mean, for, I don't know about you, let's just get dunked as many times as necessary, you know? I mean, we need all the help we can get, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, but if you would like to get baptized, you can go check out those details on our website or in the app, amen? So, next week, something special is going on. Does anybody know what's happening next week? Easter! It's Easter Sunday, that's right. In preparation of Easter Sunday, we're going to be doing a few things a little different, so I want you to kind of perk up your attention real quick. We're going to be adding some more rows of chairs. We're going to fill up the auditorium. We anticipate we're going to have a full house with the things that have been going on and taking place. And if you could help me this morning, uh, next week when you come, if you're a regular, if you could kind of sit toward the front, because we're going to have the last few rows reserved for our guests who come who might not be here on a regular basis or trying to slip in, getting their kids dropped off. And we want them to be able to easily and comfortably find a place place to sit. So can you help me with that Sunday? Absolutely. Make a place for people to find God. That's what we want to do. And also, just in case we have too many people to comfortably fit in here, we've also, we're going to be opening the activity center, possibly if we need it, possibly if we need it, as an overflow. Uh, there's a video feed and the service will be in there and all of that. And so you'll get to see this face on the big screen back there if we need an overflow. You know what I'm saying? I just want to scare you away. You know what I'm saying right there. Uh, but uh, so we got some things that are going on and happening. So we're excited. We're making plans. Because we believe that sometimes people, uh, they, they're a little more interested in coming to church and, th and hearing things. And uh, we want to make sure that they have a place and an opportunity to hear about God. Amen? And so that's what we're, we're going to be doing. We want you to invite a friend Easter Sunday. If everybody will invite a friend, we've got a place for you and your friends. Amen? We've got a place for everybody on Easter Sunday. And so we've got some invite cards that are out there on the black table with the black tablecloth. We want you to grab some of those invite cards. Just invite somebody. Do you realize that the most effective way to get people to come to church is to invite them? It's a, I know. It's kind of, it's like crazy, you know. People are willing to respond to an invitation. So I encourage you. Ask God to give you the opportunity to invite at least one person to Easter Sunday service. Amen? We got some invite cards. Makes it easy. And you can reach out to people and just invite somebody and see what God might be doing in their heart and in their life. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. If you'll stand together with me, at this time we want to pray over our offering as we move into our time of worship. If you would like to give in the offering, we've got our offering box that is there in the foyer, or you can go to CallawayAG.org, or you can go to the Church Center app, or you can text any amount to 84321, and we want you to know that, that those are multiple ways that people can give. But as we move into that, this uh, praying over the offering, there's an announcement that I want to make to you about our, our church mortgage, okay? Is that okay to give you another announcement? Okay. So you don't know unless I communicate to you, right? Currently, our church mortgage is about $690,000. Everybody say, Woo! Some of you are like, oh, that's chump change. Well, that's okay. You can see me after service to write a check, and we'll take care of that chump change. But the reality is uh, that that's debt that is kind of from a long, long time ago, right? And uh, we're grateful that we have a property that is worth that. But how many of you know when you're making that payment every month, uh, I'd love to be able to use that money for ministry rather than debt service. And uh, the reality is we got a letter from the, the uh, mortgage company. And as is common for rate reviews, we're at that point for a rate review. Has anybody noticed interest rates have gone up just a little bit in the last uh, three years? Well, an interest rate increase of about 2% for us means an additional $1,000 a month in interest charges. So we're going from, I'd just say, around $4,000 a month to $5,000 or maybe a little more than that. And uh, you know what? I just, I just believe that God wants to work through people to build his kingdom. And you don't know about your church if we don't communicate about your church and what's going on. I would love to be able to take that $5,000 a month and put it into ministry rather than debt service. Amen? And so maybe God has blessed you. Maybe you have an overabundance. Maybe you have the resource to be able to make a $50,000 payment toward the debt, a $200,000, maybe a $500,000, or maybe you could write a check for the whole amount. I want you to know that this is a worthy investment. It's a worthy investment, an opportunity. You're here because you believe in it. And I just wanted you to know that uh, there's an opportunity to put that capital to work that God has placed in our stewardship. And so if you would like to do that, you can, you can talk to me or you can place it in the offering and you know what, we'll get it where it needs to go. But uh, I just wanted you to be aware so that you knew because we want to be good stewards, continue to be good stewards of what God has given us the opportunity to. Amen? Amen. I'm so thankful to be a part of a church family where good things are going on. Amen? Come on, let's pray over the offering here today. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for who you are. God, I pray, Lord, that you will bless the gift and the giver of those that have given throughout this last week. Some have given it through the offering online, or they've sent it through the mail, or in various ways. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing, God. God, I pray your blessing upon the gift that it would multiply to meet the needs of your kingdom. And God, that you will truly bless the giver, Lord. God, as we are stewards, Lord, of all that you've blessed us with in our lives, God, I pray, Lord, that you will help us and work with us, God, to build your kingdom. God, this is your kingdom. God, this is your house. And God, we want to be good stewards of that. Thank you for the opportunity to be together with a church family, God. God, as we move forward in your name. God, I pray you'll bless this offering. God, that you'll be with us as we move into this time of worship. That you would be honored. God, that you would be adored. And Holy Spirit, know that you are welcome in this place. Father, we've come into this place from a week, Lord, going through all kinds of different things. But Heavenly Father, in this moment, God, we focus on you. And God, we focus on your presence. God, that you will truly make yourself known to us, mold us, shape us into the men and women of God that you have for us to become. Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name, thank you, Father. Come on, let's worship God together here today. the 
except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. All my words fall short, Lord, I've got nothing how could I express all my gratitude? And I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord come on don't let the rocks cry out in your place come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise
lift your hands and lift your voice to the Lord in your own words and tell him how much he means to you, how much you appreciate him, how much you love him. Just thank him for some things in your life right now. Can you do that? Come on, lift your voices all across this auditorium. Come on, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you hear us when we cry. Father, you hear every prayer. You catch every tear. Father, you see everything that we face. And Father, you desire to walk with us through every single thing that we walk through. Lord, we love you, Father. We thank you. How we worship your name. For Father, you are worthy to be praised. God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Spirit of God, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place, Father. We desire, Lord, how we desire that you be made known in our lives, God, and in the, the lives of our community and our family, God, that you would shine through and God, that we would diminish and Lord, that you would increase in every way and God, that we would not do anything to distract from what you want to do in people's lives. God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, we glorify your name. God, we glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus. God, you are worthy to be praised. Father, you are worthy to be praised. God, we glorify your name. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. 
Father, you are worthy. Father, you are worthy. Father, you are worthy. God, we humble ourselves before you this morning. God, we lay our ego to the side, Lord. We lay our pride to the side. We lay our plans and our ambitions and our desires, Father, we clear them out of the way. And Father, we fall at your feet this morning at the foot of the cross. And we say, thank you, Father, for loving me. God, thank you for being there for me. I thank you, Lord, for seeking after me and chasing after me and giving me a chance that I don't deserve, Father, to come back into your love. Father, thank you for that in my life. God, thank you for that, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. God, we glorify your name. God, we glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. would stay on you and not be distracted by the things around us thank you Lord for your message Lord this morning your desire to speak to your people this morning Holy Spirit we desire you to work through your people we desire you to move through your people Father we thank you that you see us and that you love us we thank you Jesus Father we thank you Jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible is full of wisdom and grace and mercy and guidance. It even gives us direction as it relates to corporate worship times where there is a message in tongues and interpretation and 
We believe God wants to speak to His people and through His people. Amen? And the Bible gives us direction and guidance for that. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. Andre, I just want you to continue to play the piano there. Colton, you have no idea why I asked you up here, do you, brother? <laughs> I just want to ask you a question, and I want you to answer it. Why do you love Jesus so much? I don't know what life is without him. I know, I know what life feels like without him. I know, I know what. Uh, it's just as simple as that. I know what life is without him. A lot better with him, isn't it? It's amazing. Has he done a lot for you? better than to you to you than you deserve absolutely he's a good god isn't he amazing maybe that has a little bit to do with why you are so passionate about chasing jesus when he does a lot for us it just touches us absolutely because we know what it is absolutely. we know what it is love to see what god's doing in y'all's lives ain't one of us perfect been here at the church you guys have been here for i don't know a little over a year or something like that longer than that but we all gotten real y'all got locked in here sometime last year had the privilege of marrying you in faith last year sometime and yes. you know just celebrate what god's doing and yes. all those things yeah. god is good he is absolutely god is good absolutely. and to be honest with y'all this is one of the roughest weeks i've had in a long time and I, I come in here very heavy with a lot of things on me, with a lot of things. <laughs> and uh, and when I, usually when I step in here and I'm heavy like that, it's hard for me to press into the presence of God because I got too much of myself and I can't see past the end of my nose. And uh, <laughs> and he just. <laughs> He showed out. He showed up, and he just showed me. More, he showed me more of his presence right here in this last in this last thirty minutes than I've ever seen in my life. Man, it's been a rough one. It's been a rough week, but he is a good God. He's very good. He's always on time. Yes, he is. <laughs> he knows what we need. Yes, he is. Can we just give God praise for what God is doing? Thank you. Praise. I pray that this continues and always continues to be a place where people can find God and grow in God. Amen? Amen. You may be seated this morning. God is a good God. And I tell you what, I look forward to jumping into God's word here today. How many of you would say that it's good to be in the presence of the Lord? Amen? Amen. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Amen? Thank you, praise and worship team, for doing an amazing job of leading us into God's presence. These guys get here early, and they practice other times throughout the week. Can we just tell them specifically thank you for their sacrifice and their time and all of those people that make that happen every single week? So grateful for that. So grateful for that. Well, this morning, I, before I get into my message, I just want to uh, acknowledge we have some, uh, some special guests in the house here today. Uh, many of you know when we went through Hurricane Michael, uh, we had people come in from literally all over the nation uh, to help. I mean, hundreds. I mean, it's just crazy the number of people from the cleanup and then the construction and, and all these baseboards that you see painted around here. We have the painter in the house here today. <laughs> Would you guys please stand? Would you guys please stand? These are part of the RV Maps volunteers. Can we just tell them thank you? Thank you. From my heart, thank you. It made such a big... It was a rough season 
and I'm very grateful. So thank you. I'm going to try to preach this morning. Didn't expect that, but you know, it's how it goes sometimes. Come on, somebody. Whew, I got a new box of tissues. I didn't realize I was going to be the one getting them. <sighs> Lord, have mercy. God is good. God is good. I tell you what, you go through hard times, you're grateful for people that come alongside and give you a hand. Especially whenever you you don't even know how to handle it yourself. Amen? Amen. You ever kind of shown up and say, I'm a mess, please help. <laughs> you know, that's... Uh, that's kind of how life is sometimes, you know, and so very grateful, very grateful. So uh, there are no baseboards to paint right now, so I'm sorry. You'll have to come back later. We'll find something for you to do. I promise you. <laughs> Amen. And um, all right. So uh, next Sunday, I want to make sure you know also for Easter, I forgot to say there will be no Bible groups next Sunday. There will be no Bible groups. Uh, so just want to make sure that you know how to plan for that. And uh, we're going to have some photo opportunities for you. I mean, you're going to be dressed up looking good next Sunday, right? We're going to have to memorialize this, you know. And so we're going to have a couple of photo opportunities to make sure that everybody has a chance with a flow of traffic. So we're going to have two different photo opportunities, one in the foyer, one just outside. And so it's going to be good. Next week is going to be a fun day in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Well, today I want to talk to you about a message that I truly do feel God has laid on my heart for today. I don't know who it's for, I don't know what it's for, but uh, I'm just going to tell you, buckle your seatbelt, roll up your toes, and we're just going to go with a steamroller today. Amen. But uh, at the end of service, I'm going to uh, open up these altars for us to just have a time to be in the altars if you want to be in the altars. And I'm going to ask my deacons to come forward to pray with those who want prayer for anything in particular relating to the message or relating to anything else uh, that God might be doing in your heart or in your life. Excuse me. We didn't live in a Pentecostal church. I wouldn't be snotting in church, but that's okay. Amen. Amen. I'm about to have to preach for the next few minutes, and so I just want to make sure that I'm clear and ready to go. Come on, somebody. All right. This morning, I want you to hear this, and I want you to take it away. Do not manipulate Jesus. Here on Palm Sunday, we celebrate... Uh, if we could go ahead and get my, my slide. We don't have the slides, okay? Not a problem. So, uh, but this morning, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to get to see. Uh... All right, so here we go. <laughs> Listen close. You're gonna, it's going to be good today. All right, so don't manipulate Jesus. That's the big takeaway. You, you always know that there's a takeaway, and I want you to know this is the takeaway. Don't manipulate Jesus. On Palm Sunday, we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And it, he's coming in, and we call it Palm Sunday because of all the palm branches that are being waved to people, right, as they are coming into uh, to, to Jesus, as Jesus is coming in to Jerusalem. Palm Sunday, we celebrate when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, and he was about to be crucified on the cross. Word of his miracle working power was spreading like wildfire to everyone around the world, around that known region and around that place. You see, Jesus had performed miracles. Jesus had gained a reputation. Jesus was known in the area by word of mouth. You see, they didn't have uh, Facebook, Instagram, X. They didn't have social media. They didn't have uh, the internet, text messaging, news media. They didn't have all of these things. But what they did have is what we still have today, the grapevine. Come on, somebody. The word of mouth began to go throughout the region and throughout the area that there was a miracle worker in the house. There was a miracle worker that they had heard about who had come into the region. And this miracle worker was none other than Jesus Christ himself. The people, they wanted what they wanted. And they heard that a miracle worker had entered into the city. They heard on this Palm Sunday that a miracle worker had come and they wanted what they wanted. Anybody in the house can relate to wanting what you want today. 
I have things that I want. I have desires that I have. I have things that I want to come up, uh, come to fruition. There are things that I want to see done. There's things that I want to see accomplished. And I, I run into frustrations. I run into roadblocks. I run into things that I can't handle in and of myself. Well, the people, they wanted what they wanted, and they knew that a miracle worker could give them what they wanted because they had hit a roadblock. They couldn't make it happen themselves. But this miracle worker that they knew, this miracle worker that they were aware of, was showing up in the house. If we're not careful, we can approach Jesus the same way as the Israelite people were approaching this miracle worker who was entering into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday that we celebrate. They wanted what they wanted, and they knew That this miracle worker could give them what they wanted. What did they want? They wanted freedom from oppression. They wanted freedom from the Roman government. They wanted freedom from the things that were oppressing them and giving them hardship and difficulty. They wanted somebody to come through and break the strongholds that they were facing that they could not press through themselves. To deal with the, the strongholds that they could not deal with themselves. They wanted what they wanted. They wanted to treat Jesus, if you will, like a genie in a bottle. How many times have we approached Jesus like a genie in the bottle? Oh, if I could just find that genie in the bottle, then I'm going to get what I need. I'm going to get what I want. If I just get that genie in the bottle, my plans are finally going to become reality. If I could get that, that, that miracle worker to work a miracle on my behalf and do something for me that I can't do for myself, all of a sudden I'm going to get what I want. And you see, the, the people of Israel, they wanted what they wanted. And they wanted a king. They wanted somebody to liberate them from the Roman oppression that they were suffering under and dealing with. Have you ever tried to uh, negotiate with Jesus? Have you ever tried to uh, blame Jesus for the reason things aren't going right? Come on, say amen or oh me, whichever one. All of the above. Have we ever taken things in our lives that we have gotten ourselves into and we twisted around and blamed God for it, blamed Jesus for it, and twist the situation around and manipulate the situation to say it's your fault, not my fault? If you would have just done what I asked you to, God, then I wouldn't be in this situation. If we're truthful, all of our hearts have had an inclination in that direction at one point or another. At some point in our lives. Say, it's not my fault. It's your fault. We love to shift blame, right? We love to kind of shift it around. And we have to be careful that we don't approach Jesus the same way. You see, Jesus, I love this. I love this. Now, this passage I'm about to read, you can go and put the scripture verse up there. The passage that I'm about to read here is not with Palm Sunday. This is before this, right? Jesus is performing miracles. He's doing things. And it gives us a window into the insight of Jesus and what it is that he understands about human nature. And then we're going to fast forward and we're going to apply it to Palm Sunday. John chapter 2 and verse 23, 24, and 25, it says this, Because of the miraculous signs, notice the miraculous signs, the crowd is gathered from Palm Sunday because of the miraculous signs. The scriptures, you'll see that in a minute. Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust him. So because of all of these miracles and all of these miraculous signs that people were performing, people began to trust Jesus. And you might say, oh man, this is great. What do you and I do whenever people begin to open their hearts to us? What do we do? We, we begin to entrust ourselves to them, do we not? And Jesus, this is amazing to me in verse 24, it says, but Jesus didn't trust them. Jesus didn't trust them. In another version, in NIV 1984 version, I love this phraseology. It says, Jesus would not entrust himself to them. 
because he knew all about people or he knew, knows what is in the heart of man. No one, is, no one needed to tell him about human nature for he knew what was in each person's heart. You see, Jesus knows what's in my heart this morning. Jesus knows what is in your heart this morning. He knows our struggles. He knows how crazy nasty we are on the inside. And yet he still loves us and still desires to, desired and did die for us that we could have forgiveness and freedom from the stuff that we face and the stuff that we deal with in our lives. It's amazing to me. But we've got to be, we have to understand here, Jesus knew that the human heart would try to manipulate him and what it is that he was trying to do. If he followed their plan for him, it would not turn out bueno. God looks at your heart and my heart and he says, if I follow your plan, Tim Stevens, it's going to turn out no bueno, not good. And you see, we try to take God in his miracle working power and we say, God, I need you to bless my plan. God, my plan is the exception to the rule. I know your word gives me instructions about what to do in this situation. I know your, your word gives me instructions and guidance about how to conduct myself. But in this situation, this is the exception to the rule, God. My situation is the exception to the rule. God, I want you to bless my plan. God, I want you to do it my way, and I still want you to bless me. And if you don't bless me doing it my way, then I'm going to be upset at you because you didn't bless my way. Jesus says right here that he did not entrust himself to them because he knows what's in our hearts. How that, that flesh, that fallibility, that difficulty. And if we're not careful, we try to manipulate Jesus. And to be honest with you, sometimes it's not intentional. Sometimes it's just a reaction. And sometimes it's we got to learn to grow and we have to learn to mature in our faith, in our understanding of who God is and what God is wanting to do through our lives. It's not God's power for our purposes. It's God's power for God's purposes. And we try to hijack that miracle-working power of God for our purposes. And we have to understand that the miracle-working power of God is for God's purposes, not our purposes. And whenever Jesus entered into Jerusalem and all of the, the palm branches and all of the cloaks that were laid out and they began to chant, the king of Israel, the king of Israel, they began to declare that the king of Israel is in the house. And they were thinking king of an earthly government. Their plan was different than Jesus' plan. And if we're not careful, we, we tend to manipulate what God is doing in our lives. Sometimes it's absolutely innocent and we don't realize it. And that's why we need to grow. Come on, somebody. We need to mature. We need to read God's word and we need to understand who God is and how God operates. Because that will help us to get on board with his plan in our lives. We have to be careful. We have to be careful of our motives. I mean, are we focused on what God wants or are we focused on what we want? And can I, can I clue us into something? That doesn't mean that God isn't concerned about what we want. That doesn't mean that God isn't concerned about our needs. He is. But it is amazing to me that as we draw closer to God, and His heart becomes our heart. And His direction becomes our direction. All of a sudden, I don't want to do it my way anymore. All of a sudden, my heart and my plans are changed to be his heart and his plans. Because I realize that he knows way better than I do. He knows way more than I do. That his ways are higher than my ways. His way of dealing with things is much bigger than my way of dealing with things. I understand that his plan for my life, I can't even begin to imagine everything that God wants to do in my life. If you would have told me years ago to young little Timmy running around that God would do this, 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 and this in your life, 
By the time you were just age 45, I would have said, I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> Anybody else in the house feel the same way? And whenever you got married, you were going to go through this and this and this. When you had kids, you were going to deal with this, this, and this. Then whenever you took that job, you were going to go through this, this, and this. Then when you retired, this, this, and this would happen. You would say, God, you picked the wrong man for that assignment. But the reality, God has a plan. And I'm so thankful that he doesn't reveal his entire plan to me all at one time. I, it takes everything in me just to deal with it one step at a time. Can I hear an amen in the house to that? And you know what? His grace is sufficient for me, and he renews it day after day to walk with us day by day to get us where it is that we need to be. Well, Jesus, he entered Jerusalem on a very specific mission, a very specific plan. But people, they wanted to follow their plan. They wanted what was in their heart to come into reality. But God had a plan. John chapter 12, verse 12 through 19. This is where Jesus enters into Jerusalem on what we celebrate as Palm Sunday. This uh, account of Jesus entering into Jerusalem is found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four Gospels have a record of this account. In this particular account, I want you to see here. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors. Now it says the next day. You back up in the book of John and it's talking about Lazarus. Verse 13. Took palm branches and some uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There, some say palms, some say cloaks, some say palms and cloaks. So took palm branches and cloaks and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the king of Israel. In verse 14, Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory... They remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him many, many, many years ago in the Old Testament. In verse 17, many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason why so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign then the pharisees said to each other there's nothing we can do look everyone has gone after him as to infer not come after us you see there was a plan that jesus had whenever he entered jerusalem but man had other plans and if we're not careful we have a tendency to manipulate what god's plan is for our life or in a particular situation that god wants to do things in our lives that God wants to do things in our lives. The people were overwhelmed by having access to a miracle worker. And they had a natural reaction. Just as everybody naturally would. He can do for me what I can't do for myself. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I just needed to get into the presence of the miracle worker because I was facing something that I could not deal with myself. And I wanted everything within me for God to remove the obstacle that I could not remove for myself. That God would make a level path for the things that I was stumbling and spraining my ankle and wearing myself out, going down the steep embankment and coming up the steep embankment and saying, God, could you make this a little easier for me, please? 
There's been many times in my life where I needed the miracle worker. And so it's a natural reaction for us whenever we get into the presence of the miracle worker to say, God, I need you to do for me what I can't do for myself. I need you to make the path level. I need you to remove the obstacle. I need you to intervene for me in ways that I could not intervene for myself. You see, I have a plan of what I want God to do to alleviate my pain. And all this, and sometimes... Sometimes God says, son, I'm building character. Stick with it. Sometimes God is saying, son, I'm building character. Stick with it. Jesus told his disciples, when you are tempted, I pray that you will be able to stand up under what you face and go through. Not that it would be removed. Why? Because God wants to build character in our lives. Now, every single one of us in here would love to avoid every unpleasant character-building exercise that has ever been thrust upon us by life. I mean, if you could just make it a little easier, God, that would be great. But God is trying to build warriors to storm the gates of hell and to deal with things that cannot be dealt with by babies. God doesn't need an army of babies. God needs an army of men and women who have been built into the character of God, the image of God, and has gone away from the things of their past and become something completely unrecognizable because of God's move and God's hand and God's touch on their life. But that cannot happen if we're constantly wanting to manipulate Jesus to make it easier. There are times in our lives where God will remove obstacles. There are times in our lives where God will perform the miracle. There are times in our lives where God will do things and show up on the scene for us in ways that we could not even think nor imagine nor ask for. But there are also times in our lives where we are going to have to stand steadfast on the word of God to say, God, your word is true. I might not feel it right now. I might not sense it right now. But God, you are true. Your word applies to my life today. Today. God, I'm standing upon the word of God on my life. Your promises, I'm standing upon your promises on my life. God, I'm standing upon your faithfulness that you have revealed to me over the years. Come on, somebody get a little excited in this place. I'm going to stand upon the word of God. I'm going to stand upon the things that you have spoken to me and guided me into and called me into and whispered that still small voice to call me into those intimate places and with you and your word. I'm going to allow you to mold me. I'm going to allow you to shape me into the man of God that you want me to become, not that I would volunteer to go through, not that I would say, God, I want to sign up for that assignment. God, I want to go through... I don't want to go through the hardship. I don't want to go through the heartbreak. I don't want to have to deal with people. Some people sometimes. I don't want to have to deal with emotional people. I don't want to have to deal with selfish people. I don't want to have to deal with people that are more interested in themselves than they are building the kingdom of God. But you know what? I choose to stand upon the call and the word of God in my life because God is faithful he was faithful yesterday he was faithful today and I know he's going to be faithful in my future he was faithful for my mama he was faithful for my daddy he was faithful for my grandparents and you know what those stories reinforce in me today that God will continue to be faithful to me no matter what I face no matter what I deal with no matter what I go through somebody get excited in this place here today because God desires to walk with us and to be with us and to develop us and to make us into the men and the women of God that he so desires for us to become can I hear an amen can I hear an amen thank you God is good God is good 
We can learn about His plan and His purposes in our lives. Can somebody help this brother this morning, please, find a place? Thank you. We can learn about His plan and purposes in our life. First of all, this morning, I want you to understand, Jesus came to change the inside, not the outside. We want Jesus to change the outside circumstances. We want Jesus to to make it easy on the things that we see on the outside. God, make me better looking. I have my wife with me this morning. Thank you, baby. We want God to handle the outside things. We want God to use His miraculous, miracle-working power to deal with things on the outside, things we can touch, things we can see, things we can manipulate. John chapter 12, verse 17, I'm pulling it out of this passage. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb. That, that's what they were reacting to. The miracle worker, they were in the presence of the miracle worker. They had heard stories, but they had not laid their eyes on him. They had heard what he had done, but maybe they have not seen with his, their eyes what he had done. I mean, this man that could call somebody out of the tomb... This man that could call somebody who was dead for days, who stank, smelt like the chemical plant. I'm going to give you a little clue about how to handle the smell with a chemical plant. If you don't want to smell it through your nose, when you're driving by and it's really, really bad, just close your nose and breathe through your mouth. That'll solve your problem right there. Some of you will get that when you try it. (laughs) See, Jesus came to change the inside, not the outside. They heard about Lazarus and God's power over physical death, but Jesus came not to deliver physical life that will one day wear out and fade away, but Jesus came to deliver spiritual life that will build us up and will truly last for all of eternity. We want God's power so we can deal with the physical or the outside. But the power of God is focused on fighting the spiritual inside battles that we cannot see with our eyes. That is what the power of of God is here to do, the miracle working power of God. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, Then he said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. You've heard me preach on this this year. This is our scripture for the year. It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord God. Might and power, that's physical, that's controllable, that's manipulative, that's something we can manipulate. But the Spirit of God is something we have to rely on. And we love to be able to control. Don't point your finger at any control freaks, but do you know a control freak in your life? Maybe you're the control freak in your life. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world, against powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I'm telling you, we like to focus on what is on the outside. It's easier to control what is on the outside. It's easier to... No, I don't need to come on on that one. That was pastor using his filter this morning. That was good. But it's easier to control what's on the outside. It allows us to gloss over, gloss over those deep, difficult things that are deep on the inside that we really rather not address or deal with. But can I tell you this morning, that's what God came to deal with. That's the root, that bitter root of dysfunction and disease that he wants to pluck up out of your life. And that he wants to replace with joy and joy abundantly and joy to the full. He wants to do things in our lives that we cannot even begin to think or imagine. But only if we allow him to deal with the inside. You see, the people, whenever Jesus entered Jerusalem, they wanted him to deal with the outside. They wanted a government. But Jesus said, I came not to be that king of your earthly government. I came to be the king of your heart. I came to rule in your life. 
deep down on the inside because that's where I want you to have peace and peace to the full life life to the full an understanding of who you are as a man of God and woman of God to the absolute full that's what he wants to do in your life the power of God it can heal us it can change us it can renew us it can transform us deep down on the inside and Jesus came to fulfill his plan not our plan need to hear that this morning Jesus came to fulfill his plan not our plan every single person in here has a plan whether it's an official plan or an unofficial plan we got a plan what we would like or prefer let me put it this way everybody in here has an opinion about what they would like to see happen in their life and we're generous with our opinion we're willing to lend our opinion to everyone else's life as well we're generous that way but Jesus came to fulfill his plans not our plans John 12 13 and 14 and 15 says they took palm branches and went down the road to meet him and they shouted praise God blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord hail to the king of Israel Jesus found that young donkey and rode on it fulfilling the prophecy look your king is coming he's riding on a donkey's colt we have to be careful not to force our kingdom on Jesus people were focused on making him the king here on earth the ruler of their national government their trust was focused on physical authority but Jesus came to deploy something greater than physical authority he came to deploy spiritual authority you see the spiritual realm has an impact on the physical realm the spiritual realm, God can direct the heart of a man like a water course directs water through a city he came for spiritual authority and those palm branches they indicated people's desire for Jesus to be their king and those palm branches they signified victory and celebration of royalty but the donkey notice who brought the palm branches the people who brought the donkey Jesus the palm branches indicated the royalty that they wanted Jesus to become on this earth they had a plan Jesus brought the donkey think about shrek every time i say that because in the morning we're having waffles jesus brought the donkey he brought the donkey for a reason because when a ruler when somebody of importance entered a city if they were there to conquer the city they would come on a horse but if they were coming in peace they came on a donkey and jesus said i'm not coming to become your king on this earth what you think and what you see that was a direct oppositional statement to the statement that everybody else was making and in your life and in my life there are many times when the statement of God's plan for your life and my life is in direct opposition to what our plan for our life is we're raving the palm branch and say, Jesus, come on, use your miracle working power so you can handle my situation, you can do this. And Jesus says, I got a plan and I'm going to handle it, but you're going to have to do it my way, not your way. And I'm here to tell you this morning, it can be hard. It can be hard to not be in control and to allow God to do it God's way. But can I tell you, I promise you, every single time it's better to do it God's way. That's been my experience every single time. There's been difficult situations or circumstances that I've needed to address and deal with, and I just backed up, and, I, I, and there have been times I've done it both ways. I've barreled into it, and I've handled it. And then there's been other times where I've backed up and said, God, I need you to handle this. And I literally take it to God, and I do it that way. And God takes a situation that I could not have handled without it blowing up, being hard feelings, difficulty. And God brought that situation where the person that I needed to talk to came to me and told me that they were going to do what I needed them to do without me ever talking to them. You see, God's way requires trust, but God's way is always better. It's always better. Trust God's plan for your life. Realize, realize it takes multiple generations to accomplish the plan of God. It takes multiple generations to accomplish the plan of God. And too many times in our lives, we get really, really caught up on 
on what we think about ourselves. We really think that God's plan starts and ends with me. We don't say it that way because that's too brazen, but our, we feel that way sometimes. And the reality is we are just a thread in the tapestry of what God is weaving together to create an amazing and a beautiful thing in our lives. Jesus is focused on serving, not being served. Serving, not being served. Band, if you could come on up here this morning. John 12, 19, then the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. There's a Pharisee wanting to get out in every single one of our lives. We want what we want because we want it. We have a desire, and so we want God to bless our plan and do it our way. And, we, and a lot of times that's motivated. Sometimes we're just being blatantly arrogant about it. Sometimes we're just ignorant. We just don't understand. We haven't come to that reality in our life to understand what God is wanting to do in our lives. I need you to hear me this morning. Because I know that this is the message God has for some people here today. God's molding and shaping and working in hearts and lives. The Pharisees, they were focused on what they could get that would personally benefit themselves. They were focused on themselves. What could I get? How could I use this miracle working power for me? And what were they upset about? They were upset that people were focused on Jesus and not them. What are we going to do with this guy? They're wanting to follow him and not me. What am I going to do in this situation? People don't want to do it my way. They want to do it that way. Come on, somebody. You see, in our lives, Jesus is focused on serving him. We become very, very aware of kind of who we are, kind of puffed up. And sometimes that's just because we're just being flat out arrogant, prideful, Sometimes that's a cover. Sometimes that's a cover for our insecurities. Because we don't feel worthy. We don't feel that we're worth it. We feel like we've failed at life, failed our kids, failed our spouse, we failed our work co-workers, we failed our employer, we failed God, we failed our education teachers, our mentors. We just go down the list. And we're like, God, I'm just not worth it. But we, we like to puff out our chest. You don't know what I did when I was in the military. You don't know what I was a part of and the things that I did to people that you'll never know about. Sometimes we puff up as a cover story as a cover story because we realize that we don't feel valuable on the inside we try to puff up and we say and we need to do it my way because we're trying to we're trying to convince somebody that we're valuable trying to convince somebody that that I'm valuable and the reality is God says I see you I already know that you're valuable I've already died on the cross for you because you're valuable. I love you already. There's nothing more that you can do to make me love you more or make me love you less. I just already love you. Is what he says. And we get so puffed up on ourselves sometimes. Say, people need to serve my opinion. People need to serve my direction. People need to serve what I think. People, and and it, and it, and it clouds our view of what God wants to do through our lives. Because we realize, listen, God's plan is bigger than our plan. And we have value. God knows that you're valuable. We're about to move into the altars here in just a split second. Some of you may have heard this before. Maybe you haven't. But I want you to hear this. It's about an old violin that goes up for auction. Nobody thinks it has any value. But all of a sudden, the hand of the master touches it. And people realize the value that was there all the time. This morning, I want you to let the master's hand touch your life. 
was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin. But he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, folks? He cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar. A dollar? Then two. Two? Two dollars. Who, who'll make it three? Three dollars. Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three, but no. From the back, far back of the room, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then whipping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosened strings, he played a metal melody pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. The music ceased. The auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with a bow. A thousand dollars. And who will make it two? Two thousand. And who will make it three? Three thousand? Three thousand once? Three thousand twice? And going and gone, he said. The people cheered, and some of them cried. We don't understand what changed its worth, came swiftly the reply. The touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of alcohol, the game continues, and he travels on. He is going once, he's going twice, he's going and almost gone. But the master comes and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Stop looking in the wrong places to determine your value. Stop looking in the wrong places to determine your value. If you could stand together with me all across this place, if I could have my deacons come to the front to just be ready to pray with those who may need prayer this morning. I'm going to invite the praise and worship team to sing a song here in just a moment, but I want you to hear me say this. I want you to hear me say this. Don't manipulate Jesus. His plan is better than your plan. He already knows what's going on, and He wants to do things in your life. I don't know what God's doing in your heart. I don't know what God's doing in your life this morning. I don't know what he's stirring. It may have something to do with this message. You might have something coming up you want prayer about. But I want you to know these altars are open for you to just find a place to pray or these deacons would love to pray with you. We just want to provide that opportunity here this morning. Jesus has a plan. He has a plan to change you and me from the inside out that will radically change everything. Radically change everything about how we live life. So this morning, I just want you to hear me say this. Don't manipulate Jesus by trying to convince him to do it your way. Just do it his way. Just do it his way. I want to pray over you real fast, and then I'm going to open up these altars, and I want you to come. Can we pray real fast? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. God, I just want to move right into these altars. God, I want you to do in the hearts and lives of your people, God, what it is that you're doing. God, you're moving, you're working, you're molding, you're shaping. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord. God, to draw the lessons that we can from the Israelites in the moment that you walked into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And they had their plans for you, but God, you had your plans. And God, we want your plans to be the plans that are laid out and accomplished in our lives. God, we don't want to manipulate you in any way. God, we humble ourselves before you here today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Come on, worship God together this morning. Go ahead, praise and worship team. If you would like to pray, find yourself a place to pray, or you would like prayer for anything, please come. Please come. These altars are open. Please come. These altars are open. We want you to find yourself a place to pray. We'd love to pray with you if you would like for us to pray with you here today. Come, let us pray with you here today. Come on, come. These altars are open here today. Come, these altars are open. 
worship together before we go here today. Worship together before we go here today. Worship together before we go. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. That's right. Come on. Come on. Find yourself a place. Find yourself a place. Come on. Just find yourself a place. Come on. Find yourself a place to pray. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I see his love and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Sing it out. Come on, sing it out. Come on, sing it out. Sing it out. Sing it out. Come on, worship Him today. Come on, worship Him today. Come on. You need prayer for anything. We want to pray with you here today. You need prayer for anything. We want to pray with you here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Love. 